for the applause.
Um, now I'm going to look at some student artifacts. So the numbers are really interesting, um, but seeing the student work that they produced, I think, really exemplifies some of the things that they learned in these activities. So I already discussed Rotten Tomatoes. These are two examples of students, Rotten Tomatoes movie reviews. And they really dig into um, the things I was really hoping students would get out of these activities. So this first one here, the question asks, did the video clarify anything to you for you? What was new or interesting about the video? So they're reviewing Gilmer cross-examining Tom Robinson. And they're like, it's interesting to see the way Gilmer was pressuring Tom Robinson. So you can kind of get the idea that Gilmer's not this great guy. He's kind of maybe a little bit more aggressive and probably not um, as revered or well-liked as Atkins. So they might not have picked that up just from reading the book themselves or from talking about it. And this one um, was a review from Mayella's testimony, and it says here, the hesitation, like the actor's choice to hesitate when Mayella's answering questions, proved that it was not Tom who raped Maya. So this is like really digging into those really important plot developments that students might have missed when they're just reading the book on their own. Watching their classmates act out this scene probably clarified some points um, for them. So these are um, a set of notes from one of my students in final assessment. The final assessment was a fishbowl activity. So like I said, the fishbowl has the inside circle discussing, the outside circle listening. And the requirement for this final assessment was to take notes for homework, answer the questions for homework, and then listen to what your peers say in the fishbowl discussion and take notes and add to your answers. And then I will grade your original notes and your um, after fishbowl notes as a test grade. This student, um, grading this was really, really satisfying to me because this student um, struggles to really understand just the plots. Because there are so many plots in To Kill a Mockingbird, there are so many characters, things can get crisscrossed really easily. Um, so her original note sheet that she did um, was pretty sparse. She looks like she wrote a lot, but she's very left-handed. Um, and so without having taken these notes, she probably would have gotten about a C on this final assessment. But as you can see, her notes that she took from her classmates, like they really dive into like deeper themes in the text, like looking at like courage and who Bob is, Bob Ewell is in terms of courage as compared to Atticus, things like that, that might have been challenging for her to really dig into on her own. So that was really exciting. She got 90. She was super excited. Um, I asked her if she really enjoyed the activity, and she felt that she picked up on a lot more on her own. Um, I mean, uh, in the group rather than on her own. So aside from just these written works and these quizzes, I think I really enjoyed the increase in enthusiasm, engagement, and participation the most over grading the quizzes and grading the reflection sheets. Um, these images are from our final fishbowl, the assessment that I just showed you. And when we first did our very first fishbowl, our students just sat in the circle and like, waited for the timer to go off. They stared at each other, they were very uncomfortable, they coughed, and they just waited for the alarm to go off to let them out of the fishbowl. And then the in this, these pictures, they're talking about whether or not Mayella could be considered like a victim or she could be considered like a mockingbird. And they were so into it. Um, students were constantly raising their hands. So the inside circle is done talking, the outside circle wants to add more. Um, students who usually don't participate are usually pretty unengaged or had a lot to say. Um, and you can see there are like empty seats. Students were dying to get in to the fishbowl to talk. And usually they're not wanting to talk. And they talked over my alarm when the four minutes went off. They kept going. They're like, let me finish my thought, Miss Les. I'm like, that's fine. I'll do what you do. So I was really excited. I kind of sat back and took notes. All right, so this is so great, but what can I do with it? Um, I'm still really struggling to find the perfect balance between individual work and group work because as you can see, they're taking notes on their own, even though they're listening to each other. So I'm trying to see like if there's a way I can work that out when they're taking quizzes on their own. Some assessments are best done individually. Um, I realized that routines, norms, and having really high expectations of your students is the best way to achieve these results that I saw. Um, we set discussion norms, we set classroom norms before we did any of these discussions so students knew to respect each other's ideas and to respect the alarm, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but ultimately, my biggest 
uh, takeaway from my research is that these kinds of activities, they go beyond just having to remember who Tom Robinson was or remembering that name. They remember the impact the town had on Tom and like how gossip can infiltrate a town. So that was really exciting for me and I think that's something that I'll try to pursue. Um, <laughs> that at first they sort of just sat in the fishbowl and didn't yes. say anything. Yes. Um, how did you get them to move past that? Um, yeah, so the very first fishbowl we did was back in October before this unit was even introduced and I think I brought in a lot more fishbowl activity than was originally planned with this unit with my mentor teacher. Um, so I provided them with, um, I call them flotation devices because they were like in a fishbowl. <laughs> um, so I taped to their desk discussion question stems. So things like if there's suddenly silences, I'm like look at the discussion stems on your desk and you can build a question like did x in the text remind you of something else that happened in the text so a lot of students really stepped up and if they felt that the discussion was getting too quiet they felt pretty comfortable bringing in the discussion stems um, so it did help but it took um, a few fish bowls before they were really really digging into it and i think that also speaks to like their knowledge they had to know a lot about the text in order to really have a um, effective fish bowl I'm here to switch to Yes. But I find it fascinating. Uh, my question is, are there fish who tend to like to be in the inner bowl a lot, and others who like to be the watchers in the outer bowl? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's a value in being in both yes. bowls. So how do you encourage the outer bowl people, the watchers, to become the participants and work towards having everyone share equally in their bowl? Yeah, so this is kind of like, it's usually based on the surprise seminar where you have to like tap in and tap out so you can make the choice of going into a visual. If you look at um, like the final assessment, there are several questions. And so students were assigned a number at the very beginning of class. So they had to go in and discuss that question. So they were required to be in the fishbowl. But because of the like, numbers of students, there are always a couple empty seats. But so I would invite like guest speakers. And there are students who really wanted to be guest speakers. In the first couple of fish bowl when it was tough, yeah. what did you, did you have to step in? What did you do? I told them I'm not going to say anything. 
<laughs> so it was all on them, and I'm like, it's gonna get uncomfortable if you don't talk, so you're gonna wanna step up to talk. So I just sat there, and they would like look at me, and I'll be like, no, I can't sit, I'm like, I'm like, like, you're in the fishbowl, like, you have to talk. Like, it feels less, it feels less uncomfortable if you dive in. That's why I told them. And it did, as they started to ask questions. So I thought it was not that bad. Everyone liked it. We're all nice here, so I think last question. Would it help like, if you identify a student who would like to be in the fishbowl to kind of put that person in the fishbowl if it's, if it's quiet? To kind of well, because I try to do it quite randomly. Like, they're in the circle, and I walk around and write a number on their paper. And then based on the number, they go in with all the ones. They go in with all the twos. Um, and by some miracle, every single time I randomly did that, there was always this one student per fishbowl who really stepped up. And if there were guest speaker seats, someone who would like to step up would step up and 